Welcome to our Summer at Yule Library program and thank you for tuning in for our cooking show. My name is Mina Abdullayan, the Adult Services Coordinator of Fresno County Public Library. I'm happy to say that we are hosting Miss Michelle Falk, our Fresno food blogger, once again for our summer programs. She has created Have Fork Will Travel blog in 2018 for her love of food. She has decades of experience cooking and baking and is an accomplished competitive crafter and baker with multiple awards every year at the Big Fresno Fair. She is teaching us a couple of light summer meals for our Summer at Your Library program. As she always says in her programs, remember, life is too short for bad food. Enjoy the cooking show. So we've been patient and waiting for the bulgur wheat to fluff. Now all I did is put a little bit of olive oil and boiling water and let it sit and see how light and fluffy it is. I've drained it and now we're going to add everything else in, stir it up, and it will be ready to eat. Now you can have this either room temperature or cold. The choice is up to you. Um, you want to make sure that the bulgur is cool before you mix everything else in and then let it chill. Again. It's one of those, since there's no mayonnaise, it would be perfect for taking to a picnic or a potluck, so that way you don't have to worry about um, any you know, bad food issues that sometimes happen when mayonnaise heats up. So this is just an olive oil base, which makes it even easier. Okay, so we have the cumin, coriander, garlic, because I like garlic, red pepper flakes all right then we have let's see we'll save this for dresser the decoration that's julienne mint we have the flat parsley flakes and we'll use maybe oh a quarter of a cup not a whole lot we have about a quarter of a cup of mint it's not a as bulky a leaf so it's not going to take up as much room we have the three scallions that have been minced or chopped, depending how you want to call it. We have one medium sized tomato that has been diced and seeded. And as you can see, it's already starting to look like a completely different salad. So we're going to put, this is about a little over a quarter cup of radishes. Not everybody likes radishes. You can add those in or leave them out. The choice is up to you. I'm adding them in. And if you're not sure if the radishes are real peppery, try part of one first. Um, that may gauge whether or not you add a lot or a little. Okay, this is half of a large cucumber that's been peeled and seeded. You can leave the seeds in, but they can be a little bit bitter at times. So it's up to you on how much work you want to do. All right, we're mixing this in and it's looking very spring-like. Now, this is something I want to add in because I like the the bright taste that olives give. We have some Kalamata olives and some green olives that I've chopped up. This is optional. This is something you can add in or not as you choose. All right, so we have it pretty well mixed up, and it's looking nice and tasty. We have two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar and the juice of half a lemon. We're mixing that in. All right, so mix this up, and I'll give it a taste. And this is just as good the second day as it is the first. This is something you could do the night before. And that way everything is all set to go the next day. All right, take a taste. Oh, it's so good. 
So believe it or not, the olives add in a little bit of sweetness along with the tomato. The tabbouleh is nice and light and fluffy. And the balsamic also adds a little bit of sweetness in there as well with the lemon juice giving it a bit of a kick. Now I don't want to add in any more salt. I like the salt level, but I am going to add just a smidge of pepper. Again, just to bring it up just a little bit. Taste as you go, and you can always add a little bit, but you can't take out. So when you add in seasonings, do a little bit at a time. All right. And there it is. It's all set to go. And we'll just put it in the fridge to get cold. We're going to save the mint for when we do the plating to top everything off. So give me just a moment. We will get set up for the white bean crostini. And then we'll finish it off with the sweet corn fritters. Thanks for hanging in. We're actually on the downhill. We just have the white bean crostini and the sweet corn fritters to do. So this will go really quick. So I'm going to toast the bread again at the beginning. The reason being for that is that way we can just focus and make this basically a one pan meal. We have some baguette that I've cut on the bias. The oil is heating up. I don't want to put the bread in too soon because otherwise it will get soggy instead of brown and crispy. Alright, so a couple crumbs that are falling in are sizzling. So I want to make sure get that barely coated. Put that in and watch your temperature when you do this. That way you don't burn your bread. It's just going to toast really quickly with very little time spent at all. Let's do this, make sure it gets nice and coated. And then we'll flip them over in just a moment. See, they're in the pan. Again, one of the nice things about an induction burner is it will shut off. It's a safety feature, so you don't have to worry about forgetting it on, which is always a bad thing. So while that's toasting up real quick, we'll cover what else we have. Um, there's one cup of arugula, about a quarter cup of, of fresh squeezed lemon juice, garlic, the, raw, or the uh, zest of one lemon, and red pepper flakes. And then we're going to be making the topping out of a can of cannellini beans that, or Great Northern beans that have been rinsed and drained and we're going to cook them for a little bit and make like a, well, just a topping. And then we'll make a vinaigrette with the lemon juice and use that to coat the arugula. So, all right, bread's toasting. I don't want too much brown on it necessarily. Ow, hot. But I do want it to be a little crispy. Uh, that way it will stand up to the, the bean. Um, the bean will be, I don't want it to be too crispy because the bean mixture will be fairly thick. Think of it more of a spread as opposed to a dipping sauce. All right, so that's done. I'm going to pull that off. Those can hang out over here. Again, just real quick little toast. You don't want it too, uh, too hard or too crunchy. You want to be able to bite into it, have it a little soft in the middle. All right, so I'm going to take, well, actually we're going to do the vinaigrette first, and then I will do the bean mixture. So hang on just a moment while I get some water. So I'm going to put in a little bit of olive oil. Not a lot, just a little bit, a few squirts. I'm going to put the beans and the garlic in, just enough to heat everything all the way through. I'll wait on the garlic because I want to make sure it doesn't burn. And so just a dash of water, not much more than say a quarter cup. We want the beans to heat up, break down a little bit, so that way we can mash them and make the paste uh, before we add in the rest of it. So I will throw in the red pepper flakes. And this is optional. You can add more, add less. It's a personal preference thing, but I would try to do just a little bit in there. And while this is heating up, let that cook. 
So while that's going, we'll let that sit, and we'll do the vinaigrette. So for the vinaigrette, we have the olive or the lemon juice. We have the lemon zest. And let's see, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil in also. Not a whole lot. We just, again, want a little vinaigrette to go with the uh, bean mixture. Add in a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. And I'm not going to worry about whisking this because we're just going to fold the arugula in real quick. This is going to be the topping for the bread. All right. So as you can see, the beans are cooking. And we're just barely coating the arugula with the vinaigrette. We don't want to treat it like a salad necessarily, but you do want to make sure that the leaves are coated so they're nice and bright and get that lemony kick in there. One way to change it up would be use orange juice instead of lemon. I would give it a try. I don't I think I would stick with the lemon personally to go with the white beans, but that's my preference. All right, so the beans are cooking. They're already cooked in the can, but we want them to break down a little bit more. Safety feature. So as you can see, this is real cooking in a real small kitchen, but it's something anybody can do. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of practice or at least a little bit of planning. All right, so the beans are cooking. I'm gonna add in the garlic. And now you can really smell the garlic in the air. It's not a bad thing. All right, so we're going to mash up the beans and not so much like mashed potatoes, but more of a, I think, refried beans or a seven layer dip kind of situation. And I'm doing this while it's cooking. That way they can break down a little faster. If you add less water, it would take less to break them down because you want some of the water to evaporate. Again, we want more of a paste as opposed to uh, a soup situation or so thick that you can't spread it on the bread. And it's really simple. There's not a lot of ingredients in it. Oh, hold on just a moment. Let me grab the cheese. So I almost forgot one of the main ingredients, at least in my book, is the cheese. So we have almost a cup of Parmesan cheese. And this is almost ready to go. We've mashed the beans down again. There's a few that are still whole and that's okay. But I think I'm gonna mash them down a little bit more. And add in the cheese. Let the cheese melt in. You can always add a little bit more cheese on top, which I probably do when I plate. But you want that to be melted in with the beans. Give a little bit extra kick and flavor. Is that, Parmesan? that is Parmesan. Uh, if you're going to use any other cheese, I would say make sure it's a hard cheese. If you're going to use like a Monterey Jack or a mozzarella, it's going to be stringier. Um, Monterey Jack probably wouldn't be a bad exchange if you don't like Parmesan. But see, it's getting all bubbly and oozy, which is what we want. I'm going to add a little bit more of black pepper. Again, not much. You can always get low sodium beans if you want to control the amount of salt that you're having. Alright, so this is about done. We have the salad. Alright, so we're ready to plate this. And again, this took, what, maybe five minutes? So we have our cheese bean spread. You're going to put it on your toasted baguette. And if you don't have baguette, if you have a oh, croissant, even old hamburger buns or hot dog buns, you could toast up, cut them in fun shapes. Nobody will know the difference. So once you get that, put that there. You use 
just a little bit of arugula to put a little bit peppery taste on it. It should be nice and bright from the lemon and lemon juice. And then top it with a little bit more cheese. And if you want pepper, you can always add a crack of pepper. Let me get the rest of these done real quick. And then I'm going to try one because it's been a long day of cooking and I am hungry. And we still have dessert. The sweet corn fritters. Now I hope you have got out your Fresno State corn by now because it should be ready to go. All right. I might give my taste tester behind the camera a little bit too to dry. So if there's two missing, you know why. <laughs> One of those things that doesn't have to be fancy, it just has to taste good. But this would be really good for a, oh, a game night. Again, you could take it to the park. I'm sure it would be just as good cold or room temperature. I would, If you're going to take it to a gathering, I would recommend putting the greens on at the event. So that way they don't the bread doesn't become soggy. Alright, there we go. And cheese. One of the greatest things in life, cheese. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to take this one. So, bear with me while I take a bite. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. So, the cheese is melted into the beans. The lemon and the arugula give a, a bright, lemony, peppery texture to it. And then the crispy bread is just wonderful. So this would be good even for a brunch. You could do that with uh, even a little bit of a scrambled egg on top of it, on top of the beans. Double the protein. This is really good. It's basically a vegetarian dish other than the cheese. If you want to use uh, vegan cheese, you could do so. I don't think it melts as well, but you could give it a try and let me know what you think. So now on to dessert. So we're going to, it's real simple. We are going to make a corn, sweet corn fritter. I've taken one cup total, so a half a cup of cornmeal and a half a cup of all-purpose flour. Mix them together. You want to make sure there's no lumps. It will break up as we mix, but it's better to make sure nothing is clumping together at the beginning. So to that, we're going to add, now I don't do the wet-dry method. I probably should. Some people will not be happy with that for me, I'm sure, but this is how I like mixing it up. We have a little bit of cinnamon, about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, and that is dry ingredients. So I will mix these in again just to make sure everything is blended well. You don't want a little bit of clumps of this and that. I've already added the half a teaspoon of salt, again, just to make sure everything is already added and ready to go. So into the middle, into a well, we're going to add one egg, two tablespoons of melted butter, cooled. You don't want to cook your egg. This is not a scrambled egg thing. And a half a cup of milk. So you're going to add those in and mix it up. You don't want to over mix it, but you really don't want any clumps either. So just do a quick little mix like that. And I have my fryer set at 350. It's almost there. All right, so there, everything is all mixed up other than the corn. So, you can use canned corn. This is a 15 ounce can. We're only going to need one cup, so you're going to use almost or just about half. I think that's about right. All right, so we have that in there. And I will fold that in. And these should cook fairly quickly, so We'll see where the temperature's at. It is at 350. All right, so you're going to take 
a scoopful or a spoonful. I like small scoops because I want these to be bite sized. Make sure that you don't overcrowd your fryer because that's really easy to do. You want them to cook. And you will get little cracklings if you don't scrape off the excess. It's always a good idea to scrape off the excess. All right, the first one's about ready to come out. They only take a few minutes. This isn't one of those baked goods that you can start and walk away. And wherever there's hot oil, you really need to be aware of what's going on. It's really easy for things to go sideways fast if you're not careful. It's very similar to donuts, if you've ever made donuts. Um, this is more like a drop donut, I guess. And you can make this with uh, plain white flour if you don't want to add cornmeal. I like the texture of cornmeal. Makes it, you know, crunchy. So, sorry to pull the next couple out. Pulling the crack ones out. These would be good to snack on. All right. All right, those are almost done. I'm going to add one more in just a moment. Again, you don't want to rush them or crowd them. So for this small of a fryer, I wouldn't want to do more than probably four or five at a time. Six, I think, even though they're small, would be pushing it. And then when they're done, you're going to want to pull them out so they're nice and golden brown. And let them drain on paper towels. We'll do another batch real quick, and then I'll show you how we plate them. Okay, so the sweet corn fritters are done, and I have to show you, it made a lot. So that way everybody in the family can enjoy this. And how I'm plating them is just a simple drizzle of maple syrup. You can also use powdered sugar. So now's the time for the taste test. So the crostini I already had, but I'm going to take another bite. So, with the beans, the lemon, and the arugula, it's just a perfect balance. And you really would be happy with the result. Alright, so now I'm going to try the tabbouleh. And see how pretty that is? Put a, just a couple pieces of feta cheese on it. So the bulgur is nice and light. There's cheese in there. The radishes are not overpowering at all. And the, the cucumber bounces out the heat from the red pepper flakes. And then what I put on top was the yogurt sauce from earlier with the pistachios in it. The meatballs are cooked all the way through. They're really, really good. Um, the Italian seasoning is, is nicely balanced in there. Again, there's a little bit of red pepper flakes, so there's just a faint bit of heat, but you can leave that out. Obviously, one of the sliders was eaten earlier. We had to taste test. And that's perfect with the cheese. Just a nice little layer of everything. If you don't have slider buns, then you can always use toast or biscuits. But the small hamburger buns work perfect. All right, and now for the uh, cantaloupe and cantaloupe and salami salad. It's been sitting in the refrigerator with all the flavors melding together, with a little bit of the yogurt sauce on top. Now it's an interesting comparison of flavors. The saltiness from the salami and the sweet from the uh, cantaloupe are nicely balanced. And the mint brings just a little bit of interest in there that you wouldn't be expecting. 
That's a really nice finish to that. And last and least, the corn fritters. So they fried up nice and golden at about 350 to 375 depending on your fryer. They're nice and light inside. And drizzled with a little bit of maple syrup. They're crunchy, fluffy, and really good. The, the maple syrup actually sinks in so they're not super sticky, but it's a really great dessert. I must say that everybody will enjoy the different summer foods, and especially with the tabbouleh salad and the crostini. They travel well. They're really a nice, friendly, vegetarian meal. You don't have to use the... Uh, meatball skewers but they're a nice addition as well hope you try them let me know and remember life is too short for bad food <music>